Hi guys, let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything that you give to us. Thank you, Lord, that the helmet of salvation can protect us and keep us safe. In these things we pray. Amen. So, what exactly is salvation? Well, salvation is actually when you ask Jesus to come and live in your heart because you realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And that's hard because to do that requires repentance. Yeah, that means that you have to admit that you're wrong. And that you don't have all of the answers. And with today's internet, we all want to think that we have all of the answers. And alas, we do not. So remember, we talked about 1 Thessalonians 5.8. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation like a helmet. So Roman helmets covered the whole head and they had a visor that came out, but they had ear holes. So their helmets, if you've seen those, they, they went up and around so that they didn't, you know, get your ear. And they had, they had covering for the back. And I'm, I'm sure that more than a few Roman soldiers probably tucked cloth on top of their head. So first of all, the helmet didn't chafe the skin, but second, they could let the cloth hang down the back because if you had to march in the sun, especially if you were in the desert, like in Israel, you would need protection from the sun so that you didn't end up sunburned. Uh, even Italians can sunburn. So there's that. So why is it important? Well, we actually discover part of that in Romans 8. Romans 8.31 is, it's right after Paul has talked about how the Holy Spirit lives within us. And he intercedes for us with God, especially when we have times when we can't pray because we're really overwhelmed. Or maybe, maybe we're struggling so hard that the words just won't come. I've had this I've had those days where all I can do is just sit in the presence of God and just bawl because my heart hurt or someone had proven that maybe trusting them hadn't been one of my wiser choices. It says, "But what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can stand against us?" Hmm. If God is for us, then who can stand against us? Which is a really, a really good promise to cling to. But Paul goes on in Romans 8, 37 to 39. No one in all these things, let's see, we see, I have to grab my Bible. The problem with writing things out is that sometimes we miss words. It's sad but true. There we go. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, not anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God through that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Isn't that a great promise? Nothing, not angels, not demons, not, not death, it can't separate us from God. Once, once we are sold out all the way, We've asked Jesus into our heart and his word begins to come and it plants within the soil of our heart and it begins to take root. And as we grow stronger in our walk with Christ, we 
find that the things that used to hurt us and distract us and cause us trouble, it doesn't cause us trouble anymore. Isn't that a neat promise? Sorry. I think it's a neat promise. So what if the enemy is using my own thoughts against me? I, I actually know people. You know, God gave us really amazing minds. We know this because we see this like just in architecture. Look at the Sphinx. Look at, look at the temple that they built for God. That was... Oh my word, it was beautiful. But if we're not right with God and we try to go to battle against the enemy of God, it won't end as well as we had hoped. Um, I'm, I'm reminded of those Jewish men in the book of Acts who are trying to cast out demons in the name of Paul and Jesus Christ. And one of the demons is like, I know who Paul is, and I know who Jesus is, but I don't know who you are. I don't recognize you. And the demon then proceeded to totally kick their backsides. Like he jumped, the demon-possessed man jumped on them, and he, let's just say it was an eye-opening experience for them. But probably one of the better examples, and it's more recent, is there was a group of men in a church and there was a woman who was demon possessed and they were praying over her and trying to help free her because she didn't, she didn't want to be possessed anymore. And she looked up at two of these men and she began calling out their sins and discussing how they were not the men of God that they were supposed to be. When we are not where we're supposed to be with God. When we're not spending every day with the Bible. And even even for in the beginning, just 15 minutes. I know that sounds like it's not very much time, and it's not. But the more that you pray, the better you'll get at it, and the longer it'll last. So a lot of this armor that we have requires us to exercise. You do not build muscle by sitting around eating Hostess cupcakes and ding-dongs. You don't. If you want to become strong, competent, you have to work out every day. And yes, I do realize the irony that a heavy set woman is talking about exercise. <laughs> it is not lost. But the more that we lean on God, the more he'll help us. So let's just bow our heads in prayer and we'll, we'll be done for the day. Father, thank you that we can turn to your word and we can discover what it is that you give us to help us fight against the schemes and the snares and the traps of the enemy. Thank you that you give us a breastplate of righteousness and a shield of faith and that you, you give us the sword of, of the word of the Lord and the belt of truth and the belt buckle of prayer. And thank you that your presence is our greatest weapon against the enemy of God. Father, may your word take root deep within our hearts and may we produce good fruit. May our actions and our speech combined make people see us and say, you know, I want what they've got. Hey, hey, how come you're so different? Why are you different from other people? And thank you that you promise us that when those moments come, you will give us the words that we need. That's really all I got is those. Thank you, Lord. And I I'm hope really that you have a good day. Markers. Thank you for my husband, who's very helpful with the kids. And thank you for my children, who are very, very imaginative and love to draw. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord, 
but more than that, may they be a pleasing aroma, like fragrant incense. In these things we pray, amen.